I gotta wear my glasses. We're live. Well, hello, Hofstra fans, and welcome to another Q&A with Hofstra head men's basketball coach, Joe Mahalik. Coach, welcome. How are you? As good as can be expected, Stephen. We're, uh, we're, we're fighting the fight here, just like everybody else. Yeah, it's uh, certainly interesting times. It's been a, a couple weeks, actually probably more like three since we last spoke. Um, you know, last time we did more of a uh, Q&A about the championship game and kind of relived it through your eyes, which uh, – I think our fans really enjoyed. Uh, this time, we're going to let the uh, fans maybe uh, lead the chatter a little bit. I'll, I'll start you off with some conversations, and we'll uh, we'll go from there. Um, uh, first off, let's. How are you? How's Mary? How's uh, how's your family doing? Everybody, my, my, I hope everybody else is, but we're good. We're good. Short answer is we're good. The exciting news in our family is uh, our son Joey, who is an assistant coach at Penn. He and his wife are due four weeks from today. Little baby girl, little baby girl coming into into the team Mahalik Fold. So we're oh, excited wow. about that. But um, everybody's ha ha safe and healthy right now, thank goodness. And uh, hoping everybody that's listening is 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 not suffering too much. Yeah, and the uh, practice facility looks uh, beautiful as always behind you. Except uh, there's nobody in it. Except there's nobody in it. That's the problem. <laughs> certainly not. Uh, Can't wait to get in there. Can't wait to get in there. So uh, let's get into it, Coach. Uh, Let's start with some news that happened earlier today. The uh, all Met uh, teams were announced uh, this morning by the Met Basketball Writers Association, Hofstra, uh, which has been a perennial team uh, listed on those uh, all Met teams, had uh, two honorees. Uh, uh, DeJore Bowie was named to the first team, uh, and Eli Pemberton to the second team. Uh, uh, first, your thoughts on that? Another uh, strong honor for uh, those two outstanding seniors from your program. Yeah, two special guys. And, you know, first things first, uh, I don't know what the the Met Player of the Year voting was like, but I'll bet in the beginning of the year they were going to give the award to 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 the, the guy from Seton Hall, and he's a deserving player, great, great player. He'll be in the NBA next year probably. Uh, but I'll bet you by the end of the year the voting was really close between him and DeJour because uh, there's no doubt the Jura made a run. And uh, I'm sure that a lot of people talked and thought about maybe him being the player of the year in, in, in the, in the, in the in, by the basketball writers. But really proud of DeJour. Just another 
tackling another honor for somebody that that uh, you know had an incredible year and deserves the honor. Um, is it okay to be really honest? Yeah, sure, coach. Yeah, disappointed that Elijah wasn't on the first team. I thought he, and we won't mention any names, but there because we don't want to, you know, be disrespectful to other people. But clearly, there's one person on that first team that, uh, you know, again, no disrespect to on a personal note, but uh, clearly, there's one person on there that uh, that I think Elijah should have been ahead of, and uh, maybe some other people feel that way, maybe they don't. But Elijah, Elijah had an incredible year, and, and again, proud of him for what a great, great. Uh, honor this is for him uh i guess speaking about the seniors for a moment uh do you are you aware do you have any update on what uh what steps they are as they uh move on in their lives uh with you know graduation up what what's what's next for the three of them well the first thing is what you just mentioned there is graduation they're, i think they're locked in locked into finishing it up and you know they got a lot of work to do um you know the jurors finishing up his graduate work to get his master's and Elijah's a business major, and that can be awful challenging. And I know he's got three or four courses that are taking up a lot of his time. So, um, you know, that's what they're doing. But uh, I know DeJour did sign with an agent, and they're working now to get him a, a job somewhere. Uh, I don't think Elijah has signed yet. I know he's entertained some people, but I think, um, I think he's getting closer and closer to signing with somebody. And then let's see where that takes him. I mean, there's so many unknowns out there now. I mean, I don't know if there's going to be any NBA camps this summer. I don't know if there's going to be any NBA summer leagues. So not only DeJour and Elijah might miss out on that, but any, everybody would miss out on it. And uh, anything on Connor, uh, what's his plans moving forward? You know, I'm not sure what his uh, what the update is. I don't think Connor would mind if we mentioned this, but I know he's – I think he wants to get his master's. And it was entertaining the idea of maybe going somewhere and playing football. Yeah, interesting. And, yeah, I, I I was aware of that, and I I know obviously a, a few people were. Uh, be interesting, and uh, certainly uh, Connor's Connor's one of the more beloved players of uh, recent memory to the Hofstra community, and be interesting to follow his uh, his path as well as Eli and Dejour. Yeah, uh, yeah. I hope th that's the main reason I hope we have a football season in the fall because I want to go see Connor play some football games. That's uh, forget Ohio State, forget the Ohio State Alabama game. I want to I want to go watch Connor play some football uh chiming in from the uh from the chat fans if you have questions for coach uh be sure to uh put them in the chat window on the youtube page and we'll be we'll be uh happy to uh get them to coach and uh see what people have to say coach the uh redders from uh chapel hill say hello uh loyal fans loyal yeah, they're the fans. Fir first to chime in on the day lead, lead um, blue and gold and um Tickled to death because Martha Redder's my sister and Bruce Redder's my brother-in-law, but no one loves Hofstra more than those two, and they're they're down there in Chapel Hill right now. So I'm glad they're Great. watching. Well, we thank hey you guys. for joining us, and uh, we hope uh, if you have again, if you have questions, just drop them in the uh, chat window on the YouTube page, and we'll uh, we'll get them to Coach as uh, as we go through this. Coach, um, actually, one of the next questions on the chat window uh, deals with the topic that I had listed next. Uh, Justin Paley ch chimes in. Uh, so we have four uh, signed student athletes coming in for the 2020-21 uh, uh, year. Um, if you could just uh, let our fans know, uh, we've obviously announced all four, but if you want to go through one by one, uh, maybe I'll, you could talk about each. And then if I have any questions to kind of expand, you could uh, go from there. And let's start with the first one from the fall. Uh you want from the two guys from sure okay so yeah. zion bethea zion bethea is uh is a, probably like six three very muscular strong uh do it all guard um wing player gets to the basket scores it um plays for a very good played for a very good aau team uh, the tim thomas players and uh played for a very good high school team immaculate conception in new jersey had a great senior year and uh, uh, is a fabulous kid and, and somebody that uh, we, we can't wait to get to work with. And the one little trivia question we can give you about him, the trivia piece that we can give you about him is his brother is a starting tackle for the James Madison University football team and is such a good player that I think he entertained the thoughts of going into the draft this year. Oh, so, wow. Uh, so, uh, you know. But but he's promised us when we play basketball down there, he'll root for his brother. 
So that's, that's good to hear. Dave, more more fans the merrier down in uh, Harrisonburg. Sure. David Green, six six, six six and a half, lefty. You know, we love lefties. Outstanding shooter, very good perimeter player, all purpose wing. Uh, really excited about David Green. Had a great, great year himself for Ocoee High School in Orlando, Florida area. Um, uh, you know, what, what can I say? I mean, there's, you know, I don't want to put too much pressure on these guys. I don't like to do that with these freshmen. We got to give them a chance to get, to get ready. But, uh, you know, we, we expected that the day will be ready to contribute right away. That's and great. And we, you, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Uh, so uh, one from New Jersey, one from Florida. Uh, and then heading into the uh, most recent announcement last week, uh, you you tap back into the Florida area again, uh, if you want to talk about the two from most recently. Sure. So Sean Darius Coward, fortunately, his nickname is Elmo. Elmo Coward is uh, 6'3", in the Wanye Green mold of point guards, stat sheet filler. I mean, he's going to get, well, for his junior college team, Pensacola. He was getting, you know, 15 points and seven or eight rebounds and six or seven assists and three or four steals. Just one of those guys. Fills up the stat sheet. Physical, fast, outstanding passer. Um, you know, with losing DeJour and Elijah, you know, we're gonna need we're gonna need people to help us. And then he's certainly somebody that's gonna be ready to with this. Let's not forget about the guys that are coming back, but uh, you know, we're excited that, that we'll get that to Elmer's, them. Yeah, we're excited that Elmo's coming. And then our last player is from Serbia, went to Husak uh, Prep School up near Albany, uh, Vukashin Masic, uh, 6'4". Again, another versatile uh, perimeter player, combo guard, outstanding passer, shoots the ball really well, got some giddy up to him. He's, he's a very competitive guy. I mean, we're excited about these four guys. We really are. And uh, in addition to those four guys, and uh, we actually did get a question uh, from uh, Matthew on the chat exact too. You had a freshman that sat out this season uh, that Hofstra fans are really, really, really excited about. Uh, and I think you are as well. Uh, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, Kayvon, what, what, what are your thoughts on what, where do you see him fitting into this program and what, what's the ceiling for him and what kind of player is he going to be? Sure. Well, Kayvon is, um, had some health issues. He had some knee issues. Uh, long story. We'll just leave it at that. In, in, his, in his through high school, so it was good to be redshirted him. But he's an explosive, long-armed, athletic guy. He's physical. Got a great second bounce. Very, very good around the basket. Getting better away from the basket. Um, tries to dunk everything, which is fun to watch. He'll block some shots. Um, gets up and down the floor. It, uh, you know, we're, we're uh, as I said, I just said we're excited about the four incoming freshmen. We're going to call Kayvon a redshirt freshman. So those five, well, one of them is a junior college player. But Kayvon is, is somebody, too, I think will be ready to help us. And uh, another question from the fans kind of on this recruiting aspect. Uh, what has the last month plus uh, meant in a recruiting aspect? Certainly, how has it changed? And uh, if you could just touch on how just – interesting your job has become as you recruit right now in the uh world we live in well so we're just coming on the heels of signing those two guys i think the, the number one priority as the season ended was to uh was to finish off the uh the the recruiting pit the recruiting pieces with with uh, elmo and with Vukasha. you know make sure they signed and stay on them and you know uh and it was it was hard because um you know, Elmo never got a chance to visit because the everything got closed down. And it happened for a lot of kids throughout the country. I mean, there's people that uh, sign kids and never visit. A lot of people, they would sign kids that didn't get to visit. But um, so that was the first part was to get that done. And, you know, uh, one of our one of the things we really wanted to do was make sure we brought somebody in to help the point guard position because of the jury leaving. Um, so that was phase one. Phase two then was to scour the portal Everybody, I think, knows that uh, in this day and age, almost 800 basketball players transfer. Unbelievable. It's, ah, it's terrible. It's terrible. It's uh, it just there's nothing good about it. There's nothing good about it. it it's uh, it just speaks to so many things that I don't think are healthy. But you know, it's 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 accepted. It's something that's accepted in this day and age. So we scour that, and we're watching 
you know, we're watching uh, Synergy and watching guys that are transferring and making phone calls. And, you know, at the end of the day, nothing really materialized, although it's not over. You know, we still have a, we still have a scholarship available. Uh, I think the idea there, though, is the, with the one available is that we want to, We'd want to hit it out of the park with this last one. Like really get somebody that uh, you know could be a you know like, like an all conference player. Um, so that was phase two, and then phase three. Now we just we just did a Zoom call yesterday with the staff was to talk about the class of 2021 and how how can we you know build on that. Um, you know, there's a there's a list of guys that will you know uh, Coach Farley and and uh, Coach Claxton and Coach Curtin have all got some guys and we're going to hound them and stay after them and call them. And, but, uh, you know, part of that is let's see how things play out. You know, we know we're next year we're going to have to replace Jalen and Tariq. Uh, and, you know, uh, and so we got to, you know, see how these new guys are going to be and let that play out a little bit. And just, we don't want to rush into anything, but we're, we're, we're hounding it. We're turning over every rock and making phone calls and, Doing all those things. Coach, you, you talked about, and we just brought up the the immense amount of recruit, uh, excuse me, transfers nationally that it's just, it's really become an epidemic in college at basketball at this point. Uh, something that mo most people that are fans of your program probably notice is how successful your program is, is not only players, you know, staying a part of it, but how successful you've been with the grad transfer route throughout your career here. Uh, what do you attribute that to? Obviously, the the mentality, the program, the culture you built. But is there something deeper and more specific that you can allude, uh, you know, touch on that maybe you know rest is rest in peace? But like Zeke Upshaw, who had an amazing career here, and we can go down the line: Dion, Denton Coon, and uh, on and on. Uh, Jaquiel, uh, what what are your thoughts there? Yeah, well, my first thought is how proud I am that that these kids get actually get their masters. I mean, we're six for six with, with uh, grad transfers and they were all, you know, important contributors and they all got their masters and that's not happening because there's no, nobody holds you. The NCAA does not hold school's feet to the fire with making sure that happens. And I'm proud that we do. So, um, you know, I think part of it is just, you know, being lucky enough to get the right guys in here, not just as basketball players, but as guys that are, you know, care about the right things, care about getting a, 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 a secondary degree and uh, want to do things the right way and want to win. You know, they've all been, they've all been terrific. You know, you mentioned Zion, uh, you, you mentioned uh, Dion and Zeke, uh, Jaquiel Taylor, Danny Dwyer, um, you know, they, they've all been very, very uh, big contributors and they've got their degrees and we're just so proud of them. Uh We'll go back to the chat window here for the next few. Uh, coach, oh, look at this. Ricky Tickets from our uh, – Ricky, Ricky Tickets. From our ticket. I miss, I miss yeah. seeing Ricky Tickets miss jump shots in the, in the practice facilities. Yeah, well, that's actually what he's touching on here is the uh, chances you coach a staff hoops game this upcoming year, he wants to know. Only if Ricky's on the team and, and Calby. We need Jessica Cal Calby to be on the team too. All right, Calby, you heard it, Rick. Calby you heard Ricky it, Ricky, tickets. from Coach. Um, Coach uh, Ted Duman uh, wants to know what makes recruiting transfers different than recruiting high schoolers. Well, I mean, the meat and potatoes of what you do, how you do it, are pretty much the same. It's evaluation, it's communication, it's it's developing relationships, and it's getting to know people. But I mean, I guess the obvious thing is that you know um, transfers uh, uh, have already got a couple of college years under their belt, and even if they haven't had you know, real successful uh, careers at the previous school, I think they've still developed and, and they've grown. Great. Uh, we'll go back to the chat window. Uh, our friend Bruce Iber, uh, he had a question uh, alluding back to the, uh, the recently canceled NCAA tournament and our team uh, obviously would have been a part of it. Uh, what, what were your thoughts realistically going in? Who you could have played? What kind of run you guys had in you? I know you thought, uh, obviously, uh, that your team, due to its senior leadership, had a had that it factor that they you look for in that Cinderella team. Uh, can you just touch on maybe what you thought maybe your team had in you uh, heading into the tournament? Yeah, you know, obviously we'll never know. It'll be the, it'll be the question that we can never really answer. Like what 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 happened? But 
But I'll tell you what, I would not have wanted to play us. Um, it, it was the DNA that, that you touched on and, and Bruce Iver is such a great fan and passionate fan and, and great supporter. Um, you know, he knows this and all the, a lot of other people watching. Um, it's, it's, as I said, the DNA. We had gr not just good senior guards. We had great senior guards. Great senior guards. I mean, DeJura Bowie and Elijah Pemberton, you know, you're not, you're not going to get better backcourt in this day and age when they're great, they leave or transfer or whatever. We had great senior guards. We had a team where everybody could shoot. Everybody could shoot. I mean, DeJour, Elijah, Tariq, Jalen, everybody could shoot. So you could spread the floor out. Uh, we had an inside guy who was just getting better. Isaac Conti was getting better, better, better every game. So you couldn't cheat on anybody. And then we, we played a zone that, uh, you know, was, uh, I don't know, I'm not going to say it was unique, but it was certainly very, very effective. And it was something people didn't like playing against. I mean, in those three playoff games, the, when we won the championship down there in Washington, D.C., the Colonial Championship, I think we, we gave up 51 points a game or something like that, right? I mean, it was really low. Um, so you throw those things together, and we were, we were also very good on the road. I think we tied for most road wins. I think it was San Diego State in the country for like the second year in a row. We had a lot of road wins. So, you know, you throw that in there and, and, the, and, the, and the confidence and the swagger and the makeup the, of our team. I mean, I would not have wanted to play against us. We, we, know, we would have played a great team. We would have played a top 12 or top 16 um, team in the country. Uh, and we all know we were going we to play Villanova. Everybody knows that. The, the committee would have had, would have had, would have definitely matched Jay right up against his former school. But um, so we were going to play a great team like, like a Villanova. And it would have been a, 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 you know, David and Goliath situation. But I'll tell you what, I would have loved to see it play out. It would have been a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I agree. How, how many uh, nights have you uh, stayed awake thinking about what could, could have been? How many nights have I not stayed awake? Thinking about so we, we're, we're at a there. night about 35 or something, right? I don't even know. I've lost yeah. count. So probably 35 nights you've thought about it, I'm sure. This, is, this isn't day 35 of the coronavirus. This is day 35 of uh, dreaming about, you know, being in the NCAA tournament. Yep. Um, so we'll go back to the chat window. Patrick McCarthy has a question. Coach, how would you describe your coaching style? Oh, boy. Uh, it's, it's funny how... And it's a, it's, a, it's a fair question. I, I always, here's what I would hope people would say, that, um, that, uh, that we play hard, that, that, that we, we were demanding of our players, that we insist that they play hard, that we compete like crazy. Uh, and it all starts with your, your coach, not just your coach, but your coaching staff. Um, I, would, I would hope people would think that we give our guys a chance to play. And, uh, you know, uh, let them have the freedom to play and make plays, but at the same time do it within a discipline that, uh, that the good teams have. So I don't know if that's an answer to the question, but it's how I would hope people would think of it, you know? Uh, sounds great. Great answer to me. Coach, we'll, we'll get it. So there's two areas of college basketball that fans are most interested in, right? Recruiting, and then the other one that I think fans are really probably more interested than any is really scheduling, right? Scheduling. You probably get more questions about scheduling and any basketball coach. Who do you got on the schedule? Who do you got on the schedule, right? It's it's the thing that really, and I know you've said it multiple times, uh, there's way more important things that you do on a daily basis, player development, recruiting, uh, whatever else, but there's nothing that you probably need to uh, manage and massage more than scheduling, right? Well, it's the hardest part of the job, and, and, and let me expand on that a little bit. It's not the most important. I mean, recruiting is more important. Uh, you know, your Player offense is more important. Yeah. Your defense is more important. Player development, as you just said, strategies, more, all those things are more important. But the hardest part of the job is scheduling because there's only so many teams. There's only so many teams that make sense. And if you start to win, nobody nobody wants to play it. so we've been we've been fortunate here because we've we 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 win and uh, you know for that reason nobody wants to play us and nobody ever wants to start a series on your court they want you to come there so it's very very challenging and then you want to 
you know, then there's only so many days you can play. There's only so many Saturdays on the calendar. Uh, we have a week for exams. And, and you also, you've also talked about it. You, uh, your non-conference schedule, uh, you use the term, it, it gets you ready for your conference schedule. And it also in terms of like, you might add a team that plays like Towson or right. a team that plays like Northeastern. You've talked about that regularly. And you've also said the day type of how you schedule gets you ready for either how the conference schedule is uh, put together or the conference tournament where you're playing in multiple days back to back. Right. And uh, yeah, so true, Stephen. And the, the, the phrase I always use is sharpen your teeth. We want to sharpen our teeth for league play. But, um, you know, like, like, like last year, you know, like and we want to put some games on there that are going to really challenge us. Two years ago, we played Villanova across the street in the Nassau Coliseum. Last year, we played UCLA. Um, How did that game go? Yeah, UCLA. Yeah, that's yeah. Another, another great moment from this year. We're, we'll always yeah. remember that one. We'll always yeah, remember sure that well. one. Hofstra's never lost. And, oh, no, I shouldn't say that. I think we did lose a game in Pauling Pavilion back yeah, in the – Yeah. Yeah. So um, – but um, – uh, you know, so you want to, as you said, like, it's good to get into a tournament. We, we, we can't talk about the one we're in next year because there's still some I's that have to be dotted and some T's that have to be crossed. But we're working on playing in the tournament where we play three games in three days, which is what you have to do to win your conference tournament. Um, we, you oh, know. Well, yep. Yeah. Sorry. You, you, go, go ahead. ahead. You, you, you go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, go. fans, if you uh, just continue, if you have a, uh questions put them in the chat window on the youtube page and we'll uh get to them uh coach uh, i guess i'll just introduce uh some games let you uh talk about each of those there you go uh, um this way, I won't, remind, this way i won't say the wrong thing that's good yeah <laughs> and i'll remind fans that uh obviously uh scheduling is a constant working uh thing so uh we don't have the full non-conference schedule available yet obviously because as coach mentioned uh you got to cross the uh, T's, dot the I's, and sign the contracts. Uh, so we're, we're not there yet with uh, right. all the schedule, but there are certainly games uh, that are on the schedule, and uh, we're happy to uh, let you go there. And, Coach, uh, we'll start off with uh, the first one, uh, the uh, the Long Island rivalry. Obviously, uh, with the Stony Brook game, is a regular on the schedule now. Uh, it's a great rivalry. And uh, if you could just touch on it and uh, kind of what it means to you and your program and what it means to Long Island. Well, I mean, you know, you, uh, that's a game for bragging rights, and uh, it's always a tough game. It's going to be really tough next year. They have all five starters returning, and they were very, very good this year. Um, you know, it, and there's a chance that will be our opener. So uh, we and we haven't played well in our openers. I mean, if you remember last this past year, we won 26 games but lost in the opener to San Jose State. Two years ago, we won 27 games. And we were down 15 to nothing against Mount St. Mary's in our opener. We struggled one year against Canisius in our opener. We were lucky to win. We struggled against Coppin State one year in our opener. So it's just not a good day for us. But it might be the only time we can play them. And it should be a great night. I mean, it should be a great night for – there shouldn't be an empty seat. Let's hope there's – it's like this, right, with given the coronavirus situation. But it should be a, it should be a great night to, when, when we – with, with Stony Brook. Yeah. Uh, oh, coach, did I lose you? Oh, yep. we lost you there I'm for good. a second. I'm good. Just for a second. Just for a second. Yeah. I, was, I thought you uh, didn't like the Stony Brook question, maybe. No, 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 no. no. Um, and obviously, yeah, it's, then, a, it's a great, it's a great game for the uh, community, and it's a great game uh, to get your uh, student athletes ready for a real high-level conference game because it's you know it's a game with a lot of uh, attention on it, and uh, you know it certainly could right. be a great start to the year. Um, let's and move on. I think next up is, uh, Princeton, right? I, I have Princeton next up, uh, uh, had a game there this year, uh, down their place, a uh, very unique arena. Uh, if you've never been to their, uh, facility, it's, uh, I think one of the more unique in college basketball. Yeah, it's a enormous facility that the court's kind of in one area and the stands are, uh, I, unique's really the word I can think about. Uh, I'm sure you've been there a few times in your uh, weird, 30 weird years. Wor weird works too. Weird <laughs> works too. It's yeah, almost like it, you. It's, a, it's everything. There's, it's weird. It's, it's unique. Strange. It's it's different. Uh, it's certainly, a, if you're a historian and a fan of college basketball, it's certainly a place to uh, go see a game. Um, and uh, obviously, I'm sure you've been there a multitude of times in your career. And uh, 
this year we were lucky enough to uh, win the game. Uh, I'm trying to remember the highlights. Somebody uh, did. Uh, oh, you know what? I think Stafford Truhart had a real good game, didn't he? Staff had a couple of good moments in that game. And, uh, you know, I think Isaac had a really good defensive game because one of the keys of that game was their senior big guy. And I thought Isaac Conti did a terrific job, uh, you know, uh, winning that matchup. So it's big. And uh, your, your thoughts uh, on the on the Princeton game? Again, uh, one of the uh, hallmarks of your uh, scheduling since you've been at Hofstra is, you know, the key thing is getting great long on uh, great rivalries in the area on the schedule. And uh, Princeton is another one. And obviously it's a program with a lot of history. Uh, there's a strong Hofstra connection for fans that don't know. Uh, many moons ago, uh, Butch Van Bredikoff, uh, he was the head coach of both programs at one point in his career. Uh, and uh, just, just your thoughts on adding a team like Princeton. Yeah, great name. I mean, it's, I told their coach when we played them, every, every college basketball player, you know, 20 years after their career should be able to say, yeah, I did get to play against Princeton. You know, great name, great, great tradition. Uh, they're really well coached. They all shoot the ball extremely well. Um, and it'll be, you know, those two, we start out the season with two home games, but they're not, they're, they're two really, really tough, tough games. Coin tosses, both of them are going to be coin tosses. Uh, you're going to have to play well to beat Stony Brook. You're going to have to play well to beat to beat Princeton. And and uh, thank goodness they're at home because they're going to be really, 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 really tough. And uh, we're we're going to jump around a little bit here just because of the uh, games that were that are in flux and you know uh, we're still working on. So I'm not sure where this falls in the schedule, uh, but a return game at uh, San Jose State University who uh, we played in our season opener this year. We won't talk about that game, uh, but we will talk about uh, next year. You make a trip back out to uh, California. Uh, you obviously had some success in California this year, this past season. Um, it, it, it's uh, games like that where you're getting your team on the road, getting your team in the mindset of how to prepare for a, a game when you're not at home, not in your dorm room. Uh, th those right. are keys. Those are keys as you get ready for the conference, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's part of the challenge that you want to put in front of your players. You know, we're going to travel across the country. We're going to play well, we'll be fired up to play that game because they, they knocked us off here. We owe them, but we'll play, uh, we'll play San Jose state. It's the Friday after Thanksgiving. So we won't miss classes when we take that tough trip. Um, and uh, we do have another game scheduled for out there. Are we allowed to talk about that one or are we supposed to hold uh, off? No, not yet coach. Okay. So we shouldn't mention it. Okay. All right. We're pretty close to that. That was pretty close. I think that's a, that little clause that has to get signed. I think is all we've done. I think. Yes. Fans, there will be a second game on that trip. We'll in due time, we'll be happy to discuss it, but uh, we'll wait on that. one. So we shouldn't say anything about Bill Russell or anything like that. Right. No. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh Wow, you're, you're, you got me all flustered now, Coach, and I'm, I'm like party. I'm part of your family, uh, so let's uh, let's move on. Um, we got uh, next up uh, another return game at home after playing on the road last season. Uh, we have the uh, Bucknell uh, squad. Um, an another game you kind of we owe somebody a favor, uh, but um, uh, the alma mater of Jay Wright for Hofstra fans that don't know. Um, uh, your thoughts on, uh, that's another, another home game, which is important. Uh, you like to, uh, get your guys, uh, ready and, uh, you know, the mindset of playing at home and what it's like, uh, what your thoughts on the, uh, Bucknell game. Yeah. Yeah. One of the, one of the, one of the best teams in that, in that Patriot league every year, year in and year out, year out. uh, real good culture there. Another game will be a coin toss game. I hate to keep using that word, but it's, it's a fact. Uh, and another game that's good for us to play because the other part that, that enters into this a little bit is it, it, we're a one bit league. We know that, but um, you do want your national rankings to be good. NET, RPIs, all those things. And, and when you play uh, the best teams in their conference, it ends up helping your winning percentages in your, whether it's again, NET, RPI, Ken Palm ratings, whatever. You know, Bucknell is going to finish one or two in their league every year. So when you play them, it uh, it's, it's, it gives you a good strength of schedule, which is something that's important to, to people. And uh, fans, again, if you have questions for Coach, 
Be sure to enter them in the chat window on the YouTube page, and we'll be uh, happy to get to them. And uh, we do see a scheduling question in there. We're we're going sort of in date order, so uh, I, we know people saw some news today. So we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, but yes, we will talk about all the games that we can talk about. So if you hear us talking about it, we're allowed to talk about it. Uh, yeah. Next up, a game that's really uh, an opponent that's turned into a great rivalry uh, since you joined uh, the Hofstra family. Uh, the the Monmouth series has really turned into a real strong series. Uh, obviously, uh, when you uh, started a Hofstra, they were uh, at the, uh, I guess, the mountaintop of the MAC at that point. Uh, through that years when they were uh, getting a lot of attention uh, and then kind of it's gone back and forth since then, but it, uh, it, uh, the game will be at Monmouth uh, this upcoming season. Um, I, I'm sure you agree with me. It's, it's been a incredible rivalry. Uh, even your first year. Uh, I mean, I think they had a really good year that year and we were obviously a 10 win team. The, I will say the greatest 10 win team in college basketball history, yeah. uh, but uh, Dion and Zeke had outstanding games and, it kind of laid the groundwork and the uh, foundation for what you were going to build here in that game alone. Uh, and uh, your, your thoughts on the Monmouth Hofstra robbery. Well, I'm not going to say it again, but it'll be another one of those games and it'll be tough to get them there. So, you know, the nice place to play again, really well coached team. And you're right. We've had great games with them. My goodness. I mean, we had, you know, this past year, I think we had a little bit of a margin of victory, but you know, the, the year, the, the year before last, again, our 27-win season, they had a shot top of the key to, to, to win the game and it just hit the front rim at our place. A little bit long. It was a little bit of a, a, of a long shot, but the kid had a pretty clean look at it and it just, hit, just came up a little bit short, thank goodness. And the year before that, we uh, had that miraculous win where Justin yeah, that was, that was a fun one. purpose. Stafford tipped it out to jail and he made a shot and we win the game. Just incredible. But, yeah, great rivalry, great college basketball rivalry. And again, a team that's going to finish at the top of their league. Monmouth will finish in the one, two, three, four in their in their conference every year. So good, good strength of schedule game to play. When when you look at a team like Monmouth, or you look at a team like Stony Brook or Princeton, kind of the teams that are regulars on the schedule, do you sit back with your staff and kind of say, "Hey, Monmouth is UNC Wilmington"? I'm just making that up in my head. Uh, is is there a t do you match up who they who you kind of think they are in the league? Sure. Well, you know what? We try to do that as much as possible. Now, what helps us, especially with our veterans, they'll understand it. When we're getting ready to play Monmouth, we can say, hey, you know what? They're a lot like Towson. They're a lot like UNC Wilmington. When we're getting ready to play Princeton, they're a lot like William & Mary. They're a lot like Elon. So, so all that stuff. And then we can marry those two thoughts together and our guys can, can uh, you know, understand and learn from it and help, helps them get prepared for both games, both scenarios. Uh, and then uh, the last game we can talk about, because it's a, the newest game on the non-conference schedule, uh, it obviously uh, garnered a uh, tremendous amount of interest today in the uh, college basketball world. Uh, on December 27th, I believe is the date, uh, Hofstra will be making a trip down to uh, LSU to play the uh, Tigers. Uh, coach, uh, I mean... It, what's, their, what's their football coach say? Go Tigers. Go Tigers. <laughs> Yeah. The, uh, the, these are the games that are the fun ones for the fans, the fun ones for the student athletes. And obviously every game is fun for the coaching staff, but you know, it's similar to like a UCLA, you're going to a, uh, a program that is steeped in history has had some all time greats. And uh, it's certainly, uh, and, it, and it draws immense amount of interest when you play these games for your university. Uh, can you just talk about what this does for your program, the university, and just, in general, uh, the excitement about playing them, somebody like LSU. Well, I mean, they're probably the example of the team that if you are fortunate enough, like we were this past year, to win your conference and go to the NCAA tournament, that's the kind of team you're going to play. So, uh, you know, because they're going to be a top 20 team next year and they're going to, it's an SEC team and they're going to have, you know, bigger, stronger, uh, faster, long, whatever players. And that's the kind of team you're going to play if, in fact, as I said already, you can win that conference championship and go to the NCAA tournament. So it helps you get ready for that game. Um, so our guys will get a chance to go down there and take a look at uh, Pete Maravich's jersey in the rafters and Shaquille O'Neal's num number in the rafters and see what we can do down there. Chris Jackson, too, uh, right? I think it was Chris Jackson when he played there. 
my yeah. boy Abdul Raouf. Was he a LSU? Uh, I think I so. Think so, right? I'm, yeah. a, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not yeah. crazy, am I? No, you're uh, on. You're on. So, uh, obviously, and we, we just touched, we, I touched on it a second ago, but like, what does this do for the, the university in general? Uh, getting a game like this, which might be on the SEC network, you know, there's obviously TV involved. Uh, just talk about that from a, from a promotion of your program in the university. Yeah, you mentioned the exposure. It'll, it'll be, you already just said, it'll be on SEC TV. And there's going to be a time when, you know, uh, uh, it should get some some good publicity because it's uh, December 27th. It's not a great time to play, but there's some other things that are happening with that game that, that are that are just great for, for Hofstra basketball, for the Hofstra athletic department. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's good that we can get down there and, and, and represent this incredible university and try to do something special. Uh, I did see some funny social media chatter when the game was kind of breaking on Twitter today. A couple of UCLA fans were retweeting the news and saying, uh, telling you LSU, you better be careful. So oh I, I thought that, I thought that was kind of funny. I thought I enjoyed that. Uh, we, we have some fans now out in, uh, out in Los Angeles. Yeah, we do. You know, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good stuff. Uh, we, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, we are we are a good team for those people to play because I talk a little bit from our end about strength of schedule. And there was a time when UCLA would just try to would just try to schedule uh, you know the worst team in Division One basketball just to get that win, and LSU would try to schedule the worst team, but they don't want to do that anymore. They want to they want to try to schedule good teams, and then if they can win, like we talked about, you know, beating teams that are might be the best team in the Patriot League or the Ivy League or, or the MAC. Uh, they want to be able, they want to do the same thing. Uh, you know, they want to, they want to have a non-conference win. That's going to be, you know, going to hold some, hold some ground when they, when they go to the NCAA tournament and the committee says, okay, well, you know, they played Hofstra and that's a good team. Whether they win or lose, and it's, it's, it'd be a good win for them and it wouldn't be a horrible loss. Uh, you, you obviously have been in the uh, business for quite a few years now. And obviously, uh, college basketball and scheduling is probably really about relationships. Uh, maybe not even just the LSU game, but in general, ha, 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 can you talk us through uh, scheduling and how it comes about? And is it head coach to head coach? Is it assistant to assistant? What What's kind of the process you work through when you're looking to fill a non-conference schedule? Sure. I, you know, I don't know. that. I think it's a very inexact science. Um, Colin Curtin is our point man with that. He does an incredible job. I mean, he's, he is like, I can say to Rick Cole, when Rick will say, Hey, you know, did you find another game yet or whatever? I can, I can say, and I can say this, honestly, uh, Colin, Colin's called 350 schools already. So, you know, he's a workaholic. He was, it's his baby and he's, he's incredible at it. And, uh, you know, so you're always working the phones and working the relationships. And there are some websites or whatever there are that some you can go on certain sites and see who's looking for, who's looking for games. But it does start with relationships. And you know, I say it's it's the hardest part of the job because you know the, the not, they have to make sense from budget for purposes teams. for both teams for budget purposes for like we're not going to do a home and home with Wyoming. You know, they don't want to come here. We don't want to go there. It's It would be ridiculously expensive to do that. Um, you know, our fans wouldn't care about playing Wyoming. And yet so, that's so a very fan, good so fans. So, Joe, you're telling us now we're not playing Wyoming this year? Wyoming's off the, off the list. You can check them okay. <laughs> But, you know, it, it just has to make sense. You want it to make sense geographically. You'd like it to be – you certainly want it to be more bus trips than, than plane trips. And, um, you know, I, I we, we get frustrated a little bit, and I'm being real candid here, that – we don't we don't uh, play the local teams, uh, um, you know, on a consistent basis. We're trying to change that for next year. I think I think thanks to Rick, um, Rick Cole, and some of the relationships he has, I think that's I think that could happen in, in the years to come. But uh, you know, right now there's a lot of schools in the area that I wish we played every year. So, but they don't want to play and can't make them. So uh, that's the scheduling aspect, fans. As we said. Uh, when there's more to uh, announce, we'll certainly uh, maybe we'll we'll have another Zoom or we'll announce it. Uh, but stay tuned to our social media channels. We'll certainly uh, uh, let Coach uh, let you know what what's on the horizon. Coach, uh, back to the uh, chat window. Uh, you did touch on this um, earlier, but maybe uh, Mark H was uh, not tuned in yet. 
uh, you're still looking to add a, another player for next year, you, you said? Well, we have an available scholarship. <clears throat> and, and so we will, we're kind of swinging for the fences right now. You know, if, if we're going to use it, we want it to be somebody that's going to really have a huge, huge, huge impact on, on, on the program. Uh, but right now, it's uh, and we're going to continue to do that. You never stop recruiting. Recruiting's, recruiting's, somebody once said recruiting is like shaving. You have to do it every day or you look like a bum. So uh, <laughs> That's so pretty we, good, Coach. Huh? Not Who my line. I one? stole it. I stole okay. it. Stole mine. So, uh, you know, we're, we're doing that uh, some days more than others, but uh, but we're doing that, and we're always got our eyes and ears open. Uh, Ted uh, Duman chimes in. He has a question about, a question about officials. Uh, They're all put, great. They're all great. We love them all. <laughs> uh, he says, uh, you seem to give the refs a bit of the business sometimes, but you never really cross the line. Uh, how familiar are you on an individual basis with the officials? How well do you know the officials? What's kind of the relationship a head coach has? It's a great question. What kind of relationship does a head coach have with an official as you, as you, I'm sure you see many of them regularly. It, it is a great question. And it's a part of the game. And, and I really mean this when I say it. <clears throat> It might look like I'm critical of officials, and sometimes I am, but I have great respect for what they do, how hard their job is. I could never do it. And, I, and I'll say that to refs, you ask them on a consistent basis. I could never do what you do, because I couldn't. It's a really hard job. It's a thankless job. You only notice them when they do something wrong. And, 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 I, and I, don't know, I don't know if I know any officials that aren't out there trying to do, trying to get every call right. You know it, and it's just, we got to, John Cale is our supervisor of officials, and Brian Kersey. Those guys are awesome. They work very hard. They want the games to go well. They don't want things to go poorly. Um, and as I said already, those guys really work hard, and they really, really want to do the right things. But a part of it's a relationship, and I think it's a good question. And it might look like I'm, all I'm doing is complaining to guys, but I think there's just as many times when I might say, I try to do this, let them know they're doing a good job, and it's the right call. And uh, – and so forth, and and I think they work hard the relationship too. I think that's one of the emphasis with with the uh, and this comes from from J D Collins, who is the national supervisor of officials, that they want their officials to communicate with the coaches and have a good rapport and a good relationship and try to understand both sides of it. But again, they got a hard, hard, hard job, and uh, you know it's uh, it's something that uh, I try to work at, and it might not look like it, but I try to work at but being being fair. And on a game by game basis, you're you're probably regularly familiar, if not with all three, at minimum two. You you've had a relationship with for year or years that you've known them, uh, whether some back 10, 15 years or some back five years. But uh, on a regular game by game basis, you're pretty familiar with two or th if not all three. Absolutely, especially on the Thursday night games. Now Saturdays. You know, Saturday's a busy day for college basketball. It's why I that's, yeah, I that's a great point, coach. You're talking to me, you're talking. I don't want to I don't want to get off on a tangent here. It's it's part of why I would prefer to play Sundays instead of Saturdays, because you would get officials who have been around longer. We're gonna get some newer guys on Saturdays. There's 150 games on Saturdays. I mean, what's that? 450 officials? I mean, how many can how many are good? I mean, you know, how many are that experienced? So we're gonna get we're going to get some newer guys. We're going to get maybe some guys who don't have as many miles in their tires. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, hey, listen, they're like, they're trying to get better too. They need, they need game experience, but that's the kind of guy we're going to get on Saturday. We're going to, we're going to get a couple of guys who are, you know, still, uh, so, so, you know, still working at it. And on the opposite end of that spectrum is Thursday. You see a, a different level, maybe of official that you kind of, uh, that uh, might work more, maybe big East games. Cause they're, uh, depending on the days of the week that the co other conferences are playing, right? Yeah, it's a less. You know, there, there aren't as many games on Thursday nights, and so the uh, you know those guys want to, they'll work every night if they can. I mean, they gotta they gotta uh, you know they want to they want to they make a living on when they ref basketball games, and they want they can only do it for four months, so they they'll, they'll work seven nights a week if they can. Okay, we'll go back to the chat window, fans. We'll uh, we'll be here for another maybe ten minutes, coach. You good? Ten minutes more? I'm good to go. I'm good to okay. go. Okay. Uh, Got some another few more questions uh, coming in. Uh, again, fans, if you have questions, drop them in the uh, chat window. Uh, Robert Hausner, uh, now that DeJour and Eli are graduating, who do you expect to take their leadership roles? Great question. It is a great question. And you know what? It's, um, 
you know, we feel good about our team because Jalen Ray, Tariq Coburn, Isaac Conti, um, you know, they, they are, they're not just returning starters. They're not just returning stars, but they're great leaders and great guys. And, uh, you know, they're people that everybody, you know, whether it's basketball or the game of life, you want to be liked and you want to be respected. And those three guys are both. Everybody likes those guys. And everybody respects those guys. And they're, uh, they got big shoes to fill, but I think they're up to the challenge. Uh, and then uh, kind of on the same uh, uh, area in terms of leadership, uh, Dan Benjamin uh, uh, comments, you've done a great job bringing kids with good character. And we talked on that earlier. Uh, how do you eval evaluate character when you're recruiting a student athlete? Well, that's, that's more important than, than anything. Um, you know, and, and it's, and it's hard. We work very hard at that. I, you know, I say it all the time, you know, um, it's not just how tall you are. It's not how well you can shoot, shoot the basketball. It's not how well you dribble or play defense. You know, I mean, are you good? You got to be a good player. You got to be a good student. You got to be serious and respectful student, but you got to be a good person. And, uh, you know, be respectful when it's time. We'd be a hard worker. And we work very, very hard at getting to know the person. Way more, way more, uh, even though it's just, just as important, but way more than whether they can shoot or dribble. We want to make sure it's a good person because that's, that's what Hofstra deserves. They deserve for their basketball players to be good people. And that's what we work very, very hard at. And it, as hard as it is, we got we to gotta do it. It's a great answer, Coach. You know, I did notice, Coach, your, you said your sister chimed in, right? Early, she was the first one to comment. But we have, uh, last chat, we had a bunch of uh, Mihalik's, uh chiming in. Are, are they just silent uh, tonight and just watching? Uh, you know, I, I if, don't uh, know. I don't know. They're supposed to help me through this. I don't know what they're yeah. doing. So. But let, let's talk about it. You've kind of talked about uh, in different aspects of this chat about uh, the team that's returning and where they are. Um, and, and obviously, you have three returning starters. Uh, it's been an interesting five weeks. Uh, how do you help them through this five weeks? How have you communicated with them? Where are we at with our returnees? And what, what, how are you helping them get better uh, in all aspects right now in a very interesting state? And kind of uh, what are you looking at for specifically from uh, Tariq, Jalen, and Isaac uh, moving forward? Yeah, well, I mean, well, with all the guys coming back, I mean, we, we this coronavirus affected the spring sports they didn't have their seasons so they didn't sadly they didn't have their seasons but we had our whole season I mean we didn't get to play the postseason which was which we'll never ever ever you know forget and always have to deal with and we understand the bigger problem but we had our whole season so um in, in kind of a natural way you know the four or five weeks at the end of the season every year I personally feel like it's a time to you know, give the guys some space. They work so hard, so, so, so hard. When we had 100, 100 plus practices, let alone the 35 games, and that doesn't include what they did last summer. So it's time to like back off a little bit, give these guys some space, you know, let them catch up in school and let them let their bodies heal a little bit and rest. And so that first, you know, I, I, again, I don't know what you, four or five weeks, there was a natural time to, for these guys to just, you know, get healed mentally and physically. But the last week or so, we had, a, we had a team Zoom last week, and we talked about how as hard as it is, it's time now to find a way to get better every day. Whether you go for a five-mile run near your house or grab a ball and dribble in your backyard or, you know, uh, do push-ups while you're, while you're watching something on TV, but it, you've got to find a way. And, and the teams, that, the players that do that, the teams that do that, the teams that found a way to, to, you know, get better when the coronavirus kept us at home, those are the teams that are going to win. And I know our guys want to win. Uh, breaking news, Coach. Uh, uh, an assistant coach at Penn just chimed in on the chat window that he is, uh, he is here and he is watching. So we do have family that has uh, chimed in. <laughs> um, Four weeks so, to uh, the day. Due date. What's Due date for him. Four weeks from today. Wow. Four weeks from today. That's uh, co Coach's son, uh, Joe, uh, who's an assistant coach at uh, the University of Pennsylvania. 
Uh, Coach, we're here for another five minutes. So a question about you. Uh, uh, I, I, most fans probably know who know you well. You're a big walker. You walk every day, I think. Uh, what what have you been doing to keep busy right now uh, in the five weeks since? Are you are you walking daily? What are you doing uh, yeah, to keep busy? Yeah, I'm trying to do that. I mean, it's just it, it's it's mentally and physically healthy. Just uh, you know, try to you know get up and crank it, and, and you know stay stay as sharp as we possibly can be. Uh, what I really enjoy, um, you know, I don't normally in the spring spend a lot of time with with X's and O's. Because, you know, same as the players, you've done it so intensely for like nine months that there's a time when you just kind of, you know, whatever, get away from it. But I really enjoy twice a week, I get on a Zoom call with a great bunch of coaches and a great bunch of guys. Uh, I don't think they mind me mentioning some of them, but, you know, there's guys all over the country. And we've been talking about X's and O's and sharing ideas and looking at game tapes. And, you know, it's... Uh, you know, 10 a miles. Anybody, anybody we'd be interested in knowing who you're uh, hanging out with on Zoom? Sure. Tim, Tim Miles uh, was a head coach at Nebraska. As he's, yeah. He redshirted this past year. Uh, Porter Moser, Loyola Chicago. Uh, Chris Harriman's an assistant coach at Cal Berkeley. David Patrick's a head coach at UC Riverside. Stevie Dunyu at University of Pennsylvania. Mike Brown at – Mike Martin, I'm sorry, at, at Brown – Mike Martin at Brown, John Gallagher, University of Hartford. Um, you know, just a great bunch of guys and great coaches. And it's it's just been so much fun. The last couple of times Jeff Van Gundy has, has come on with us and, and he's been he's he's helped us and we we pump him with questions and so forth. Um, my son Joey's on it, my other son Matt gets on there. But it's uh it it's been it's been awesome. It's been awesome, it's been fun and and it's helped me a lot. It's it's uh you know, I've always found through the years that when you do that, one of two things happen. You get reassured that what you're doing, you feel really good about. And you also get some ideas. You, you, you uh, ad adopt and adapt by, by maybe stealing an idea from, from somebody throughout the country. But it's been, uh, it, it's, been, it's been great fun. These guys, are, these guys are great coaches. They're great coaches and even better people. So it's been fun. We've, we've, uh, we've, uh, they, they, Somebody nicknamed the, 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 the Motley Crew. I don't know why they called the Motley Crew, but they called the Motley Crew, and it's uh, it's been fun. It's been fun. How many uh, how many miles a day are you walking? Well, I try to go I try to go four miles. Try to do it in an hour. I get close to that. So uh, in the middle of the day, and then I just try to just uh, I'm so lucky to be across the street from our beautiful campus. I just did a half an hour over here just. I'll get, get the phone. I'll be on the phone with somebody, other coaches or recruits or, who, you know, assistant coaches. Poor Colin Curtin's got to listen to me when I'm walking. But, uh, you know, it's uh, – it's, uh, like you get a chance to be reminded how beautiful our campus is, I'll tell you. It's just – the tulips are blow, blooming right now. It's a shame a lot of people aren't looking at them right now. Well, Coach, uh, we thank you immensely. I, I thought we were going to chat for half an hour, you know, talk a little scheduling, talk a little recruiting, and guess – an hour later, we've uh, filled up another hour with you. Uh, we thank you immensely for your time. Uh, it's great catching up, and uh, we hope you're well and stay well and stay safe. Uh, and uh, we thank you for joining us tonight. Well, it's always fun. And, and for all the Hofstra people that are listening, thank you. Thank you for your passion. It motivates us. It really does. It motivates us. There were so many people on the floor. I'm not going to start naming names because I'll forget somebody. That, uh, you know, it just it – just, made my heart feel so good to see some of the people in Washington, D.C. on that floor because they, they've had such a passion for Hofstra basketball for, for, for so many, many years, and it made me feel good. And, and Stephen, we're going to put the pressure on you to come up with another neat idea to do this again in a couple of weeks, whether it's – we did recruiting and scheduling a little bit. We can talk maybe some more about scheduling then, but we got to, we got to do some maybe some all-time teams or some, you know, some just – it's a little dangerous to do that, though, right? You start forgetting people, but – we won't very, forget everybody. Very dangerous. It's yeah, dangerous. And, uh, our our great point guard from this past season, DeJore Bowie, still wants to know uh, Coach Fairley's uh, the best point guard he's ever coached or something. He uh, he asked him on Instagram, and Mike has not answered yet. So uh, well, Coach Fairley is just going to say the one he's talking to. That's all he has to say. The one the one he's talking to. That's the one. That's his favorite point guard. Whoever he's talking to. But he's, well, he's Coach, been around some good ones. Thank you so much.
Uh, fans, uh, stay tuned to our uh, website and our social media campaigns, uh, social media accounts, and we'll be uh, sure to update you with any news and uh, maybe when uh, Coach will be uh, chatting again soon. Uh, Coach, again, stay safe, be well, and we'll talk soon. You too. Thank you, Stephen. You are you are great at what you do, and thank you for all you do for Hofstra, Stephen. Thanks, it. Coach. Have a great right. night. Stephen, bye-bye.